So today's theory breakdown is on phenomenology. Uh, it's done by Dr. Colin Cronin, the senior lecturer in physical education and sport coaching at Liverpool John Morris University. Um, he's the 2019 Young Scholar for ICEP as well. Um, and this piece goes with the article that we highlight with Dr. Cronin. And he just breaks down phenomenology really well. So we splice this out into a shorter podcast. Um, so people can have a reference to it, but I think it gives some really good solid examples of how to apply this theory and really breaks it down for even a, a beginner in theory to understand. So here we go in another episode of playing with research in health and physical education. Right. So you use the study and it was framed in a phenomenological approach. Can you give our listeners an overview of what this is and why it's so hard to maybe pronounce this word? And I'll probably pronounce it wrong. Uh, and so why is it selected as a theoretical framework? Okay, so for me then, in selecting this, it's probably a really good example of how qualitative research um, is influenced by the qualitative researchers. So I came to this study wanting to understand what does it mean to be a coach? And that was my own personal interest that I brought to the study and phenomenology is a theoretical framework or philosophy really that kind of addresses those big questions what does it mean to be what is the essence of an activity uh, but it does it um, by trying to embrace the human subjective experience so just bear with me now this is where I'm going to get deeper so so I'm um, uh, you know are you sitting I'm down bu- are you I'm buckled in I'm buckled okay. in I'm ready to okay, go okay so um so in this case phenomenology comes from a philosophy um you know early 20th century uh, very much rooted in german and french philosophy and the key theorist originally is a philosopher called Husserl and Husserl kind of rejected a positivist objective quantitative science at the time so basically, he was looking at psychological studies that were being done in labs that were trying to remove bias. They were trying to remove the subjective experience and trying to objectify and learn. Now, Husserl felt that was dehumanizing and it was removing the human from the experience that you're trying to study. So if you're trying to study something, Husserl had a different idea. Instead of trying to remove the person from that experience, instead of trying to make it sterile and keep it contained in a lab, uh, why not go the other way? Why not embrace the person who has that experience? Uh, A simple example of this in coaching is if we want to study coaching, Husserl would argue that the best people to do help us do that are coaches, the people who have the everyday experience, who live that experience. Let's not try to remove their subjectivity. Let's not try to remove their past experiences. Let's actually embrace them and get them to tell us those experiences, spend some time with those experiences, maybe even experience it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So phenomenology is really a philosophy that values experience and the basic tenant, the basic key point is that experience is the route to understanding. Now, are you still with me or have I lost you? Uh, I'm still with you. Do you have an uh, an example? Yes, I do have an example. So just bear, bear with me. So this is maybe something listeners might be, and um, listeners might be in the commute on the train, listeners might be in the office, so they might be able to relate to this. But if we, if we just take an, a simple experience of something you're doing right now is you're sitting in a chair. Well, what does it mean to be sat in a chair? Well, there's two ways we can approach that. We can take your chair to a lab and we can look at how it's made objectively. We, we can look at that it's made of leather, it's made of metals, it's got four legs. Uh, we can look at your posture. Maybe we get some cameras on you and use biomechanics and we decide that, you know, you're sitting at a 90 degree angle, your core is strong. We can do some physiological tests and we can see which muscles are activated. So we can do lab based objective science. But for Husserl um, and for phenomenologists, that misses the point. Really, sitting isn't about being at a 90 degree angle on a piece of metal. You know, sitting's about an experience. So right now I'm sitting at my desk and it means I can relax. 
It means my legs, which are tired from my run earlier on, are getting a rest, so that's nice. It's a nice feeling, I'm recovering. But it also means I don't have to worry about standing or my posture, I can focus on this interview. So for me, the essence of sitting on my chair right now is it's enabling me to focus uh, attention on you in a relaxed way. And that's a very subjective human experience, which is a very different result than if we took the lab approach and found out, okay? And phenomenology tries to do that, it tries to get you to describe how you feel, what you see, what you hear, and analyze what is the essence of that experience for the individual. And for me, the essence of sitting right now is I get to focus and have this conversation with you. Um, so I don't know if that helps readers or listeners. Or I, I love the analogy. Okay. I love um, it. So if they're still with me then, here's where I might lose the listeners even more. So this was Husserl's approach, the idea of experience, the idea of essence, the embrace and the subjectivity. Since then though, there's been a whole stream of philosophy work done on this. This is people like Heidegger, Sartre, Merleau-Ponty. So there are lots and lots of variants of phenomenology. Um, what researchers have done, and I may be, be able to give you some examples from sport or coaching or PE in a second, is researchers have then thought, okay, so if experience is the route to understanding, why don't we capture these experiences? Um, people like Jackie Allen Collinson has done some um, uh, phenomenology of running um, and scuba diving. And sport lends itself to phenomenology because it's emotional, it's feelings, it's sensory, it's active. So let's not remove those um, subjective experiences. Let's embrace them. Suzanne Raven has done a phenomenology of dance, which is very evocative and gets to the core of what does it mean to be a dancer. Um, Standel has done a really good short book actually on the phenomenology of PE. What does it mean to be physically educated? from a subjective human experience. It's really good, some of the listeners might like that. And Max van Manen, who's influenced me a lot, has used phenomenology to look at learning and pedagogy. What does it mean to, to be a learner? And of course, I've used that in a coaching context, but it equally could be used in a PE context. Um, and then finally, health researchers have been using phenomenology for ages. So people have looked at what does it mean to experience depression? What does it mean to experience obesity? And these rich accounts of what patients experience, that can be really useful for practitioners and, and, and doctors and medical professionals to have. Um, so in a nutshell, I'd, uh, that's phenomenology. I don't know if I completely lost you on the second half of that explanation. I think that was phenomenal. <laughs> can you let uh, people know where they can find more information on your current work you're doing or your social media or anything like that? Yeah, so I suppose if anybody's listening to this and they are interested in learning pedagogy relationships, uh, they could uh, get me on Twitter, which is at Cullum Cronin. Uh, you might have to put a link to that. With, yeah, with we'll link to that. Um, I also have a little blog where I try to blog uh, I, my articles into an accessible format, a uh, shorter article, a, a, a free to access article. So I've got some of my articles up on that blog. And again, you'll find that on my Twitter handle, uh, but it's at consideringcoaching.wordpress.com. Uh, 